All right. So, so far, uh, I was talking about how to minimize f of x. But now, we are interested to put another constraint. The constraint is that x should be inside the convex set x as well. And I want to talk about uh, projection and proximal operators. So if if x is your convex set, this is your convex set. So the standard gradient descent is that you start with some x of t at point x t, and you go along the gradient descent algorithm, and so you get another point. Then you you project it back to your set, okay? You project it back, and then you go again, and then project it back, and then you go again. So this is the idea of uh, projected gradient descent, proximal gradient descent. And so projection is a special case of proximal operator, I'll show you. And uh, so you can write your update rule. You simply add projection operator before doing your standard gradient descent algorithm. So, Okay, so in order to prove the errors and what, what I've done before for the projection operator, uh, I mean, we started, by, we started by saying that, okay, we want to say that uh, xt plus 1 is equal to xt minus eta gt for any, for a gt inside subdifferential. And... Uh, a, it was important for us to calculate that xt plus 1 minus x star uh, is equal to uh, xt. You just use your law, which is gradient descent, uh, squared. And then you expand this sum. Uh, you expand this, you get xt minus x star squared minus 2 eta gt uh, xt x star um, plus eta 2 gt squared and uh, of course we had an assumption that it is bounded so it's less than g squared <clears throat> And so uh, this one is less than or equal to xt minus x star squared minus 2 eta f of x minus f of x star. I used, uh, I used the standard convexity assumption. That's why I replaced that. And plus eta to g2. So finally... <clears throat> Uh, I could write f of x t minus f of x star is less than equal to 1 over 2 eta x t minus x star. I have done it before. I just want to do it to see what happens if I use projection operator. Do, does everything change uh, or, or not? So plus eta over two g two, and this is uh, this one is no longer we cannot no longer use the telescopic operator because x t plus one is now y t plus one. If I define uh, if I define y t plus one like this, that it is the x t minus eta g t. And then you use gradient descent here. Xt plus 1 is projection into x of yt plus 1. So uh, the proof is completely the same. Now xt plus 1 is yt plus 1. And everything is the same. So because, because in the last uh, lectures, 
I was talking about that uh, when you project something, project it to this, project it to this, it contracts, projection contracts the differences. So if X star is projection of X star onto the set X, uh, then you can easily um, uh, understand that because the projection operator contracts the differences, so we can write something like this, X star. So, so now we can use whatever we have done before. And so this is less than two eta, uh, XT minus X star squared minus XT plus one. And, uh, you, uh, and then you continue uh, and um, finally, you sum over t like before. Everything is like before because we know how to deal with that telescopic sum. And then this one is less than one, uh, two. I just uh, repeated what I did with the uh, projection operator. So this is one over root of uh, square root of t convergence. So you see, nothing has changed. Uh, so we have generalized it for the uh, this projection operator. So when you have um, when you want to minimize f of x subject to a set, you can just omit these these constraints by saying that this is just equivalent to saying that minimize of f of x plus another function, which is your, um, I mean, indicator, indicator function, you know, indicator function is, is infinity if x is not that set, and x is inside that set, it is zero. And uh, so it is a, this is convex, but you know, it's not smooth. And projection subgradient projected subgradient uh, is different than subgradient of this function. So, so you see that uh, projection of uh, x onto x is uh, equal to arg mean of uh, indicator function plus one over two u minus x. We are saying that uh, this is the definition of projection. So this is just equivalent to arg mean of one to u minus x subject to u is in x. So this is the projection of point x onto the set x. So uh, you see that the projection operator is a special case of proximal. I will show you how. Uh, first, I want to define the proximal operator of point y function h, which is the generalization. So just instead of the indicator function that I minimized, instead of indicator, I use h of x and then same as usual, because I want to uh, keep it just around the point X. We want to minimize it. And then, uh, of course, you can write it, define it at H uh, as well. So this part is the same. Now to eta X minus Y squared. So when eta goes to uh, high numbers, then this term vanishes, you know, so the proximal gradient algorithm, so the projection gradient, uh, projection gradient descent is uh, you update like this, project it onto set X, XT minus eta gradient of F of XT. And the proximal, proximal gradient descent is XT plus one is proximal eta h 
xt minus eta gradient of xt. So if h is uh, if h is indicator, then prox operator is just a projection operator. So these are operators, not functions. So it goes a vector to a vector. It's an operator. And uh, so examples of uh, proximal operators, let's say you have your mm, popular function, which is the L1 norm that uh, we use in lasso. And the proximal operator is arc mean, arc mean of u, your function, which is which is this one, plus I mean the u l plus one over two eta. This is the just the definition of proximal operator. So in order to minimize this, you just need to put a zero should be inside the, your subdifferential. And this one is smooth, so you can, you can differentiate it uh, for, you can use the calculus, so it's one over eta u minus x. And then uh, from this you get x minus u is inside eta uh, subdifferential of u. And uh, I recall that if z is inside subdifferential of u1, then all the coordinates are like this sine of ui if ui is not zero. And if ui is zero, it's the interval minus one and one. And knowing that, you understand that ui is, is now xi minus eta, if xi is greater or equal to eta. If xi is less than eta, it's zero. If xi is less than equal to minus eta is xi plus eta. And so uh, you see that we have calculated, uh, you have, we have calculated the proximal operator. Another example uh, would be, for example, and, and, for, and for this example, let's say, let's say eta is equal to one. So the proximal operator for that, for a, for a vector two minus two and three is just, if you put inside the, the law that I've just written, <clears throat> it becomes one zero minus two. So it pulls everything towards the origin. Another example is just the quadratic, uh, polynomials x transpose q of x plus q transpose x plus and the proximal i leave it as an exercise for you you can easily show that that this is i plus eta q inverse of this times x minus eta q another example uh, let's say f of x is the sum of f i x. You use it in machine learning. So it is interesting to know that proximal of eta f x, the, because it's a vector, so at the i's coordinate is uh, proximal of x i. Uh, I want to add some interesting thing about Moreo is a great mathematician, Moreo decomposition. Moreo decomposition, <coughs> for example, a Fenichel trend, Fenichel transform is defined as F star of Y 
is equal to supremum over x, y x in your product of y and x minus f of x. You can do it directly, you just directly simplify the equation to see that x is equal to pri uh, proximal of f plus proximal of f star x. So you can see the analogy with uh, connection to projection. For example, if you have a vector x, you can project it and uh, it is the sum of this one is the, you can decompose it as this one and the, the other one. So, <clears throat> so you see that uh, how it is, it plays an important role. And finally, I want to show you an interesting thing to, to motivate you for proximal gradient descent that I will talk about in the, f in the next lecture. If you have a function, which is the sum of a smooth function g of x, so this is smooth, and h of x, it is easy to evaluate prox operator. For example, you want to minimize f of x, which is equal to, I mean, this is the lasso ix minus y squared plus regular regularization operated lambda times l1 norm so you see that this is not uh, this is not smooth and this is smooth so this motivates you for proximal gradient descent